you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. One martini and a Manhattan. Thanks, Noreen. Shall I run a tab for you? Nah, we're going to take off in a minute. I want to stay for the show. What show? Georgie says it's a new act. Some guy with a dummy. Big deal. But he's supposed to be good. I'll run a tab. Okay, but this is the last round. Over here, sweet. Uh, be right with you, sir. Drink up. Slow down, Artie. The show hasn't even started yet. I got a better idea. Let's go someplace. What for? You know, someplace private. We can talk. Get acquainted. I told you, Artie, I'm not going to your place. Why not? This is Dullsville. Besides, those ventriloquist guys freak me out. I think they're funny. Yeah, but the dummies. They all got those big heads and those big painted eyes rolling around. Ugh, they give me the willies. Testing, testing. Oh, great. It's time for the show. Yeah, great. Is this thing on? I know you're out there, ladies and gentlemen. I can hear you breathing. But seriously, folks, if you're wondering why I called you all here this evening, it's a mystery to me, too. No, honest, I do know. It's because you want to see the chorus girl. Get him out of here. Yeah, I want to see him, too. All of them, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. But before we do that little thing, I want you to meet a couple of friends of mine. Well, one of them at least. The other's just a chip off the old block. So put your hands together and give a nice, warm, a New York welcome to Jerry and Willie. Hi there, everybody. Well, we're certainly happy to be here. Speak for yourself, jerky. Uh, that's Jerry. Well, like I always say, a dummy by any other name. Now cut that out. All right, all right, let go of the soup. Now, Willie. I said let go of the tux. I got it off a penguin at the Bronx Zoo. I'm getting out of here. Please, Willie, control yourself. Really, you can't go now. You couldn't. Those spindly legs won't even hold you. Say, what do you mean by that? Nothing. I didn't mean a thing. I only said it's not a good idea. Really? Come on now. <laughs> look, look, I apologize, all right? Whatever I said, I was only kidding. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Willie, isn't there something you wanted to ask? Ah, uh, okay. Tell me this, wise guy. It's getting close to Halloween. Are you superstitious? Me? Not at all. Ah, why don't you fess up? Well, on occasion... What do you do? Throw salt over your shoulder? Cross your fingers? No, never. Then how come your legs are crossed? Oh, <laughs> sorry, Willie. Let me put you on the other knee. There. Comfortable now? That's better. Okay, wise guy. Tell me what it is you do do. Well, sometimes I knock wood. Ow! You did it again! You asked me. I'm through. I resign. Sit back down. From now on, I'm a solo. And as for you, you can turn in your lock. Give me one more chance, Willie. Now listen. Why should I? I know all your lines, and they ain't that good. Be reasonable, Willie. What in the world would you do without me? Anything I want to. Anything, huh? Like what? Well, for one thing, I could be a better ventriloquist than you. Oh, I don't think so. I do. Watch this. Put your hand over my mouth. Not tonight, Willie. Go on. What are you scared of? Well, you might bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> what are you talking about? You don't feed me. All you do is give me your leftovers from the pencil sharpener. You know that isn't true. Go on. Put your hand over my mouth. Either that or you drink a glass of water while I sing Melancholy Baby. Well, if you insist. Do it so we can get to the joke. Now you're talking. Meet a ventriloquist named Jerry Etherson, a voice thrower par excellence. His alter ego, sitting atop his lap, is a brash stick of kindling about two feet tall, whose sobriquet is Willie. But in just a moment, Mr. Etherson and his naughty pine partner will discover that they've been booked into an out-of-the-way bistro on a small, dark back street known 
as the twilight zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Dummy, starring Bruno Kirby, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. I'll tell you, I'm a better ventriloquist than you are any day of the week and twice on Sundays. All right, Willie, if that's what you want, prove it to the folks. So what are you waiting for? Put your hand over my mouth. Remember, you promised. Okay, here goes. Well, it's about time. I've been waiting all night for a chance to do 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 A funny thing happened to me on the way over to the club tonight. That a fact? What happened, Blockhead? I was out in front of the Ritz of Oil. That's where you live? Yeah, that's where I live. In front of the Ritz of Oil. You put formaldehyde in those jokes? Well, why do you ask? Something must preserve them. Don't be insulting, Mr. Woodshop. It just so happens I'm not only a comedian, I'm also a lover. A lover? With that profile? You like it? I've seen better looking mugs in a coffee house. Oh, yeah? Well, listen, I've got a hundred women tearing their hair out for me. That a fact? That's a fact. I'm just tired of bald headed women. Willie, I think you've proved your point. You can throw your voice just as far as you can throw the ball. All right, Willie, I'll take my hand away. Now, why don't you be nice and say goodnight to these wonderful people? In a minute. First, I want to show them something. What's that? You can do anything I can do better. All right, wise guy. How about this? What are you going to do? I'm going to turn my head all the way around like Linda Blair. Are you serious, Willie? How's that for a 360? Not bad, but doesn't it hurt? Of course it does. What are you, the exorcist? I hope you didn't eat any split pea soup tonight. Come back tomorrow, folks. I'll be all alone up here. Promise. Just you and me. Come on, little pal. We're cutting out. Let me tell you something, folks. When I shake this busher and get me a real act, you're going to see some class. Let's go, Willie. We don't want to overstay our welcome. What welcome, jerk? Good night, everyone. And thanks for being such a... Help! I'm being kidnapped! You got your hand over my mouth again. Call my lawyer. Call my carpenter. Call my tree surgeon. Never mind the surgeon. Just get me to the nurse on time. Hey! I told you not to do that. And I told you never to put your hand over my trap, didn't I? <laughs> you okay, Mr. Etherson? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Rich. Must have caught a splinter or something. What did you do to me, you little creep? Thanks a lot. Well, what are you looking at? Mind if I sterilize the hand? And stop staring at me. I'll turn you around so you can look at the wall. Huh? Huh? What do you have to say about that? I, I don't have anything to say about that, Jerry. Frank, uh, how, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Who are you talking to? M me? Oh, no. I, I, I was just talking to myself. Uh, you know, trying out a new routine. A uh, new one? Yeah, yeah. Pull up a chair. So how did it look out there? Not too bad once you got going. Small audience, but a reasonably happy one. Nobody asked for their money back. Good, good. Of course, it doesn't matter what I think. Sure it does. You're my agent. The only thing that matters is what the paying customers think. You got through it okay, Jerry, somehow. You and the little tyke over there. Why do you have not turned around like that? Careful. I mean, I, I've told you not to touch Willie, haven't I? Still doing the bit, huh? Knock it off, Frank. What's that smell? Alcohol. What? I cut myself, all right? Smells like scotch. No, it doesn't. Take a look around. What do you see? This is makeup. And this... This is a jar of cold cream. I told you I'm on the wagon. Yeah, sure. I thought you gave me a solemn promise you were going to stick to soda pop and cappuccinos from now on. What's it take, Jerry, to get you wise? I'm tired, Frank. And I don't feel well. Give me a break and clear the area, will you? First, I'm going to clear the air. Now, I don't know where you manufacture your illusions, but you're not Edgar Bergen or Sherry Lewis or Jim Henson. At the moment, you're a second-rate nightclub entertainer. And if you stay on that bottle, you're going to lose even that title. I'll lose the bottle. Don't worry. 
just pull out for a while and give me some space. I don't even know why I waste my time. Ten percent of you is grief, and it's always been that way. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's because I got a soft spot in my heart for people who commit suicide eight hours a day. Frank. Jerry, it doesn't have to be this way. You give in to some bad hooch, you have bad nightmares. It's as simple as that. You take away the hooch, you take away the nightmares. Now, you need a college degree to figure that out. You've got the chronology wrong. First it's the nightmares, then it's the bottle. I wouldn't drink if I didn't need to. And I wouldn't be a second-rate nightclub hustler if that... that filthy, miserable little... Frank, I keep telling you, I want to get rid of him. I have to get rid of him. That stick of wood? That, that fugitive from the fireplace over there? How many psychiatrists you have to see, Jerry? How many hours on the couch? How many 80 buck an hour visits? I can't help it. You can help it. You know what it is. You've been told. Often, endlessly, up to my craw and overflowing. Schizophrenia. I know it by heart. Patient feels helpless and manipulated by forces beyond his control. I could give it to you backwards, forwards and sideways and in three different languages. It's like a well-rehearsed off-color joke. So the patient makes the transference between himself and his lifeless dummy, but is then unable to separate himself from the object of his transference. Now that's all very psychiatric, and it's worth about two and a half bucks a word. But that's not it, Frank. I told them and I've told you. It isn't schizophrenia or paranoia any more than it's athlete's foot or a head cold. Willie is alive, Frank. I tell you he's alive. Willie is a dummy, a piece of wood. Put him down. Look at him. Does this thing look alive to you? Please, Frank. 24 inches of lumber in a funny little suit of clothes and you're shoveling yourself into a grave over it. Careful. Now listen to me, Jerry. I've gone along with you. I've held your hand, and I've sung you lullabies, and I have patted you on the back. I've also covered for you the 110 times you run out on a performance. I thought up excuses that hadn't even been invented yet. I have gone without sleep and without commission, because I thought I had a talented article here who eventually was going to crawl out from under the bottle and hit it big. Well, I don't think you're such a talented article anymore, Jerry. Now, let's put it this way. Maybe I think you could be, but you're never going to. I think you're a self-indulgent sot with an overactive imagination, and the only thing you like better than scotch is sympathy. Well, I'm going to give you just 24 hours to straighten out. Get rid of the bottle, and get rid of that crazy obsession that you're in a death match with a dummy. Frank, it isn't just a dummy. I tell you, it isn't just a dummy. Whoa, take it easy, kid. You're going to blow a gasket. Frank. Take a look at this. What do you got there, Jerry? A, a backup? I had it made special. Didn't know if I'd ever have the guts to unpack it. But now there's no choice. Frank, say hello to someone very special. I'd like you to meet... Willie's replacement. Willie's replacement? That's right. I call him Goofy Goggles. See the big thick glasses? Great, huh? From now on, he's going to take Willie's place. You mean in the act? You got it. I'll get rid of Willie. I'll scrap him. I'm going to do a whole new routine. A whole new routine takes time. You got another show in half an hour. I won't be able to go on for the late show. Tell him, tell him I'm sick or something. I've already told them you're sick or something. Now, the trouble is they know it's something that's bottled in bond. Frank, you got to back me up on this. You'll be out on that stage when you hear your music. I don't care which dummy you bring, but you'll be out there. This is one I'm not covering for. New routine, new routine, right. Come on, Goofy, we can do it. There you go. You sit right here on the table, and we'll cook up some gags. Sure, sure. It'll be easy. What are you looking at him for? Don't worry about Willie. I turned him around so he can't see. Better put on a little more pancake. It's hot under those lights. How you doing? Clean your glasses for you? There. 
<laughs> okay. Now, say, uh, say, uh, say, Goofy Goggles, why don't you have your glasses fixed? You look kind of nearsighted. Are you kidding? I don't need them. My eyes are A-OK. -okay. I'm a grown boy. <laughs> Goofy, you're looking at the band leader. I'm over here. Keep talking. I'll find you. Why don't you sit on my lap? There. There you go. Isn't that better? Say, Mr. Etherson, I've been meaning to tell you. You, you, you put too much starch in my collar. <laughs> too much starch in your collar? Well, that's so you'll stay awake for the whole show. Heads up. Did you see that chorus girl over there? Where? Where? See? What did I tell you? But listen, you got to be subtle about it. Don't stare at them when they walk by. Your whole head wobbles like it's going to fall off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll work. We're going to make it out there. You and me, Goofy, and nobody else. Just you and me. Willie. I saw that. You turned your head around. Don't look at him in the mirror, Goofy. He's nothing anymore. As soon as I lock him in a suitcase, he's through. Washed up. Finished. Hi, Jerry. All ready to go on? Sure, Noreen. I'm gonna kill him tonight. Margie, listen to this. Hello, Margie. Pleased to meet you. Noreen told me all about you. This'll knock you out. Make me talk, Jer. Go ahead. Watch this, Marge. I'm on in a couple of minutes, Noreen. How about after the show? Oh, come on. Check this out, Marge. He makes me sound just like Willie. It's real crazy. Go ahead, Jerry. Hey, where is Willie, anyway? Uh, he's not going on tonight. I've got a new partner. He's kind of cute. Meet my new friend, Goofy Goggles. Just the same. I miss you, Willie. Here's a kiss. Can you catch it through the door? Mwah! Knock it off, babe. That tickles. Willie, cut that out. <laughs> what did I tell you, huh? What did I tell you? It sounded like he was all the way in the dressing room. Isn't that wild? Gotta go, I'm on. Goofy, you're talking to the band leader. I'm over here. Now listen, I think it's about time you got new glasses. I really do. My eyes are 20-20. What are you looking for? Keep talking. I'll find you. <laughs> you know something? I think you ought to have an eye test. My eyes have a great IQ. Trust me. That's what you said to your toothpick. All right. Now, let's try it. Look at this card. But, oh, wait, wait, wait. Are you, are you trying to trick me already? What does this say? Uh, give me a hint. Come on, Goofy. It's as plain as the nose on your face. It ain't that big. <laughs> Goofy, it's a letter that's between D and F. I got it. It's an E. My, my, how did you do that? I cannot tell a lie. That'll be a first. Well, I saw that card before and I memorized it. <laughs> I thought so. Well, uh, I got a mind like a steel trap. A mouse trap is more like it. Now, what do you say we get out of here? Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. <clears throat> uh, for my big finish, ladies and germs, I'd like to sing my favorite song. I only have eyes for you. You are here, so am I. Maybe millions of people go by, but they all disappear from view. With a voice like that, Goofy, it's no wonder they're all disappearing for the exit. I'll make the jokes. You just move your lips. Cause I only have eyes for you. Cute act, isn't it, Georgie? What's cute about it? I like the old dummy better. Why'd he change it? Well, you know, brighten it up a little bit. Give it some novelty. Novelty? With a ventriloquist? Frankie, you see one, you've seen them all. Every dummy looks the same. And if they ever changed the jokes, I'd have a coronary. What's with you this anyway? What do you mean? Well, usually, the acts go mix with the trade between shows. You know, walk out on the floor and do a little drinking with the customers. That's how we make our nut. On drinks. 
But this guy he thinks he's Greta Garbo. Locks himself in the dressing room like a regular prima donna. Oh, he's a little nervous tonight, is all. You know he hasn't been well. This is his first time out in a month or so. He'll warm up for you. You tell him to do that. Tell him to bring the dummy out and walk around the tables after the show. It's psychological, Frankie. Talking makes people thirsty, know what I mean? Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. That was great. Really. Thanks, Marge. And him. Oh, he's a living doll. Oh, Goofy, you are the only man for me. Mwah. Hey, careful with the merchandise. That's enough, Marge. Goofy doesn't like to be touched. Say, what's the matter with him? Come on, Willie. You've had it. Get down and stay down. That's right, put your legs in. Stop fighting me. I said lie down. There. Rest in peace, Pinocchio. You next stops the sawdust factory. And as for you, Goofy, it's strictly you and me from now on. How's that collar? Still too tight? Jerry. What are you doing here? You leaving? What's it look like? Well, you got your coat on. You packing up, huh? I'm getting there. Georgie was hoping you'd mix with the customers. Tell Georgie I'm a ventriloquist, not a shill. Why don't you tell him? And that means? That means I'm resigning from your fan club. You keep your 10%. I'll keep my self-respect, also my sense of humor, my regular meals, and my normal office hours. You and I have had it, Jerry. I have gone the route with you and then some. You don't need an agent. You need medical help. You never believed me, did you? I believe you have obsessions. I believe those obsessions are eating you up alive, but I also believe, Jerry, that you're letting them. Frank, listen to me. He talks when I don't talk. He moves when I'm not looking. He tells jokes I've never heard of. He steps all over my lines. He throws me bum cues, and then he drowns out my gags. He, 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 listen to yourself. Frank, I'm not crazy. He's real. He's alive. That's why I stuck him in that suitcase. And that's why I locked it. It's all over now. I'm taking Goofy, and I'm going to catch the first plane out of here. I'll go down to Miami, or maybe L.A. Frank, what was that place in Kansas City that we did so well in? The place in Kansas City was the same as Miami, which is the same as Los Angeles, which is the same as Sioux City, Iowa, which is the same as any town south, north, and west of here. They're all the same, Jerry. You're not going to leave Willie by hopping on a plane, train, taxi, or a one-horse shay. This thing you have to lick right here. This you lick at the source. Yeah, well, we'll see. Come on, Goofy, get in. We're taking a little trip. What about the other suitcase? Drop it in the river for all I care. Or keep it for old time's sake. I don't ever want to see Willie again. I thought I just explained it to you. This you can't just run away from. And I told you we'll see about that, Frank. Just you wait and see. Willie is history. Come on, Goofy. Let's get out of this dump. What? Is anybody there? Georgie? Georgie, is that... Is this thing on? Somebody forgot to turn off the microphone. Well, it's not my problem. Goofy and me, we're hitting the road. Who's there? Come out and show yourself. I can't see who's... That you, Mr. Etherson? <laughs> oh, hi, Rich. Yeah, yeah. It's me. I was just closing down. Uh, uh, Rich, don't forget to turn off the mic. Oh. Okay, but I thought I did. Then somebody must have turned it back on. Wonder who did that. Well, take her easy, Mr. Reitherson. Nice show. Thanks, Rich. Night. Good night. You running out on me, Jerry? What? You're not going to leave me in a stuffy old suitcase, are you? 
something else, was there, Mr. Ethison? Did you... Did you just say something? I said goodnight, that's all. Sure, sure. Don't work too hard. Uh, I'll try not to. Now, come on, sport. I wouldn't lock you in a suitcase. Where are you? Where? Hey, Geppetto. Did you forget something? Or someone? You leave me alone. So then, he says, he doesn't like to be touched. Can you believe that? Well, Jerry's a nice guy and all. Nice looking, that's for sure. But he's got a lot of problems. I don't know what exactly, but... It... Oh! What's the matter? This alley is really dark. So? Are you sure it's safe? I always go this way. It's quicker. Want me to walk with you? Don't be silly. You go up there to the street. There's plenty of cabs at the corner. Yeah, but it's so late. You shouldn't walk home alone. Don't worry about me, Margie. I can take care of myself. Well, if you say so. I say so. See you tomorrow night. Okay, Noreen. Night. Is that you, Margie? Is somebody there? Hey, take it easy, Noreen. It's only me, see? Oh, Jerry, thank God. Who did you think? I don't know. Were you following me? Well, sort of. I was waiting for you. You were? Yeah. I was, I was watching the stage door for you to come out. Sure you were. Would I lie? Well, in that case, uh, I suppose the line is, uh, this is so sudden, and for once it happens to be true. I thought maybe... What's in the suitcase? <gasps> is that Willie? No, 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 it, it's not Willie. Listen, I thought maybe we could get a drink together, or, or maybe a, a sandwich and, and a cup of coffee. What do you say? You want to go with me? Why not? I've been meaning to tell you. I, I've been meaning to tell you that I think you're very, very good looking. Really? Yeah. You're the best looking girl at the club. No kidding. So, so what do you think? We could get a, a, a cup of coffee or something? Seems to me I've heard that line before. Noreen, it's not a line. I mean it. Slow down. Don't get me wrong. Just coffee. That's all. Sit someplace where it's nice and, and bright and talk, you know. That's original. Come on, Noreen. How does that sound? Sure, I guess. But what's the big hurry? Do we have to walk so fast? What? Oh, no, of course not. What's the matter with you, Jerry? Are you sick? What do you mean, sick? I just like you, that's all. Is that a crime? I like being with you. What is going on? I just thought we... we could spend some time together. Something's wrong. You act like you're frightened. What are you frightened of? Noreen. Tell me. Noreen. I can't be alone now. I can't. He's bugging me. Oh. His voice is coming out of everywhere. He's all around, no matter where I go. Before you came out, I thought I saw his shadow back there on the wall. It was you, Noreen. Who are you talking about? Willie! Don't you get it? Noreen, you've got to help me. Let me stay with you tonight. I'm telling you, Willie is... Willie is a dummy! Get away from me, Jerry. You're scaring me. Noreen! Noreen, wait! Noreen, please! Come on, come on! Open up! Hello? Rich? You still here? You didn't go home yet, did you? Rich? Say, I was wondering, could I stick around for a while? Maybe spend the night right here in the club? You mind? I can sleep in the dressing room. See, I got a little problem. There's this, uh, this guy, and he's following me. Ashton, Ashton, 
Is this thing on? No. What do you say, stranger? Long time no see. I thought you were gonna blow this joint. Where? What's the matter, Booby? Your plane got grounded? Well, couldn't you get past security with that funny-looking suitcase? But how? What do you think happened to me on the way to the club tonight? I was out in front of the Red Savoy Hotel. That's where I live. In front of the Red Savoy. <laughs> Where did you go? You're not on the stage. The microphone isn't even there. Wanna play hide and seek? Guess what, Jerry? You're it. it, it, it. Hide and seek, huh? Where are you hiding, you little... <laughs> come out. Come out. Wherever you are. <laughs> The other suitcase. You're still in there, where I left you. You gotta be. There you are. I'll kill you, honey. There. What do you think of that? Now let me see you try to follow me. Wait a minute. What are these glasses doing here? These are goofies. I know, I talk to myself when I put them in the... When I put them in the... Goofy? I didn't mean to hurt you. I took the wrong one. How could I leave the wrong suitcase? Open the other one. Go on, Jerry. Open it. The one you've been carrying around. <sighs> I was in there a long time. Now I gotta get my pants pressed. Let me give you a tip, Jerky. Don't ever run with a suitcase under your arm. I almost lost my lunch. Then you'll have a real mess to clean up. You get away from me. Just leave me alone. I won't tell a soul. Believe me, I won't tell a soul. Who do you think you're talking to? Maybe you need glasses. Willie, just let me walk out of here. And you'll never see me again, I promise. Well, why don't you take the eye test? What am I holding up? I'll give you a hint. It comes between D and F. No fair peeking. For the love of God, let me go. No can do, partner. Now, what do you say we get down to business? But you're a dummy. You're made of wood. Somebody built you. How could you... You jerk. You made me real. You spiked me to life. You gave me thoughts. You poured words into my head. You moved my mouth. You rolled my eyes and stuck out my tongue. You big lug, don't you get it? You made me what I am today. And I hope you're satisfied, you rascal you, from the song of the same name. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Evening, everybody. And now. Direct from the Big Apple, New York City, the funniest pair of cuckoos you'll ever see here in Kansas City or anywhere else, Willie and Jerry. Come on, folks, let's give them a big Kansas City welcome. How do you do, folks? How do you do? Funny thing happened to me on the way over to the club tonight. I met this broad. Come on now, Jerry. You don't mean broad, you mean lady. You just make the jokes, I'll deliver them. But seriously, I've heard stories about you. I'm innocent, I tell you. I was framed. I've heard that you're superstitious. Me? You are, aren't you? I mean, you throw salt over your shoulder, cross your fingers. I wish you'd cross your legs so I could get more comfortable. There. How's that? Better, but it ain't exactly the lap of luxury. Now, Jerry, I asked you a question. Remember? Of course I remember. What do you think I am, a blockhead? We're talking about superstitions. All right, wise guy. What do you do? I knock wood. Ow! <laughs> What's known in the parlance of the times as the old switcheroo. From boss to blockhead in a few easy lessons. And if you're given to nightclubbing on occasion, 
you might want to check out this particular act. It's called Willie and Jerry, and you'll find them booked into some of the better clubs along the Great Grey Way known as the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop, twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. The Dummy, starring Bruno Kirby with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling from a story by Lee Polk. Heard in the cast were Craig Wickman, Michelle Graff, Linda Ryder, Rich Kamenick, Christian Stolte, Doug James, Paul Patch, and Roger Wolski. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.